According to the Oxford English Dictionary, russet means a subdued reddish-brown colour. But also in the archaic sense of the word, it means homely and simple. Bloody nice boot though. <laughs> Let's russet through the review. How are you going? Welcome back to Bootlosophy and my name is Tech. I acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands I live on, the Wajit people. Now this is Christian Daniel's second boot, the Larry Lace-Up Boot. It's in Wicket and Craig's traditional harness leather, uh, that's veg tan, in a colour that uh, Wicket and Craig call russet. I have to say, it's not the russet coloured leaves of autumn that I expected. Uh, and the Christian Daniel website photo is a bit more reddish brown than this. Even after darkening and mellowing after a few months of wear, it's still more of a yellowish natural colour than what I'd call russet. But when I first saw it, when I unboxed it, it was actually quite surprising being so light in shade. I'll talk about Christian Daniel and their Fernando Chelsea boot in a minute, but this is a service boot patterned boot. It's about six inches high in the shaft, uh, single piece backstay, cap toe with brogues and pink detailing on the edge, uh, all eyelets, low profile sole and a, a low block heel. It has a sleek almond shaped toe box with a wide ball and a narrow waist. There are a lot of service boot style uh, boots out there, especially from the newer breed of small brands, which I think attests to the popularity of the style. Uh, obviously modelled after service boots of World War II uh, and brought back into popularity since the 2010s when Viber brought back their service boot and Whites followed with their MP boot. Brands like Thursday followed the style, in their case with the Captain, see my review up there, uh, and whether cap toe or plain toe, they are definitely popular today. Now to be honest, it is my favourite style, even though as you know, I, I will dip my foot into anything. One of the reasons I like service boots is because they are so versatile and adaptable. And depending on the leather and the last shape, you can wear them casually, of course, but you can also wear them uh, reasonably, with reasonably formal clothing. Once your uh, dress pants, say, uh, cover the shaft of the boot, it's kind of hard to tell if it's a, a slim uh, service boot uh, or whether it's a kind of rugged boot or shoe. But to be fair, in this pale light tan colour, despite the sleek and uh, slim shape of the last, it's not easy to go formal. They are currently in between restocks, so a lot of sizes are not available for now, but they do have a dark brown version called Buck Brown, which might be better for dressier wear. However, even in this uh, light tan colour, I think you can go to at least smart casual or even you know marginally business casual, paired with a pair of khaki chinos, a dressed button-down shirt, a tie, and a navy blazer with a pocket square. You can attend business meetings and morning weddings. One of my preferences when I'm wearing light-coloured boots is to make it pop by wearing a dark pair of pants, a dark-coloured button-up shirt, and a lighter grey blazer. Again, a pocket square dresses it up. In the cooler months, you can swap the blazer for a dark, say, Harrington jacket and still look very smart casual. You can up the casual and change into jeans, still wear the same shirt, and pop over a jumper with a quarter zip. And if it's colder, uh, put on a heavier, say, suede or leather jacket. You can go all in casual with these boots too and perhaps stay in the brown monochrome by wearing uh, sandy brown jeans by RM Williams, a brown work shirt, and throw on the bulky fit suede jacket, giving the outfit some shape. Okay, let's talk about the brand Christian Daniel. The brand was started by Christian Ramos in 2022. Daniel is his father's name, so the brand is named after himself and his father. Nice touch. Christian started with a Kickstarter campaign to launch his Chelsea boot called the Fernando in 2022. You can see my review of the uh, Fernando up there in the uh, links in the corner. I think it's fair to say he had some challenges. I joined the Kickstarter campaign uh, almost when it started in August of 2022. 
and I didn't get my Fernando boots until April of 2023. This was the tail end of COVID, don't forget, and supply chains were still being dragged out all over the world. His supply of Dr. Sol outsoles, for example, got held up somewhere between the factory in Taiwan and the docks in Mexico. Yes, Mexico, because Christian started uh, with subcontracting a Leon factory to make the Fernando. He has since then, I believe, started his own in-house production in Leon in his own factory. And the Larry boot is the first off that in-house uh, factory production. When he announced the Larry boot, he proudly announced on Instagram that he had assembled a small team of skilled artisans that operate as a family and that his vision of connecting people through a shared love for boots was happening. Nicely put. You know, I really like supporting good quality small brands. So I bought a pair of these as soon as they were announced. As promised, they took three months and arrived by uh, December 23, just a little after Christmas. Christian Daniel remains a small batch manufacturer even today, taking orders like a, like a group MTO style to fund a batch and then making enough in the batch to not only fulfill the orders, but also have some runoff stock on the shelves to sell ready-made for a little while. If you go to their website at the time of recording this, uh, beginning of May 2024 this is, you will find very few available. But if you register your email, you'll be told of the next batch or restock. It, it can be frustrating, but my experience of the Fernando and this Larry is that it is worth the wait. Now, let's go into the construction. Before I start, let me just explain that when I ordered these, you could choose between stitch down and Goodyear welted construction, which I will talk about later. As well, although it's not specifically said on the website, I have seen on other threads uh, on Reddit and, and stuff like that, that you can ask for different material. For example, a leather heel counter instead of uh, the standard Celastic. Uh, although I have no idea if there is a price adjustment, I, I assume there is. Uh, so let's start with the construction. To see what Goodyear Welt construction is, you can watch this video up here. Now these I chose in the stitch down option. Stitch down construction is where the uppers are lasted around the foot shape mold and then the edges are bent and hammered out, flared out, and then stitched directly to the midsole, and as in this case, the outsole. Now this is a 270 degree uh, stitch down option, meaning that the flared out uppers are stitched down around the front three quarters, or actually in this case, about half of the boot. Uh, the back end remains tucked inside and is glued, nailed, and then stitched to the insole and midsole. Uh, very similar to a Goodyear welt construct at the back, except using the midsole rather than the welt to connect everything. There is a double stitch along the stitch down portion, and one of the stitches continues around and under the heel to secure the back end. The outsole is a rubber studded outsole from Vibram this time. This is their Eaton model that looks like the British Daynight sole. The rubber is a softer compound though, I have risked my neck on day nights across a wet tiled floor, <laughs> but these have uh, gripped under similar circumstances. And I'm pretty sure that's because it's a softer rubber, so it gets you uh, a higher degree of coefficient of friction. The midsole is six millimeters of veg tan leather, and the heel is made up of two stacks of what I think is the same six mil leather, uh, topped by a Vibram studded top lift. Inside the boot, the same thickness of leather, uh, I, I feel the insole. And on top of that, I think is a, an unpadded leather uh, heel only sock liner, which I presume is to protect your feet against any protruding clinched nails because uh, it doesn't actually provide any squish. Not that that's a bad thing. Footing is already very uh, comfortable and secure when you're walking in these. There is a steel shank for arch support and rigidity under your arch. Uh, the boot is leather lined in the vamp area, but the shaft is unlined and the quite nappy reverse side of the shaft does feel a little rough. Now overall, the upper's leather is not thick. It's only, I think, a little over one mil thick. Uh, this in the rough nap feels like it's a sturdy veg tan that's split into a lighter weight. Now because it is veg tan, it is still pretty sturdy. This is Wicket & Craig's traditional harness veg tan leather. So it is full grain in the sense that the top side is clearly uncorrected, showing off uh, all the leather texture that you would expect. 
It's just that full grain leather can be and is usually split at various weights. And this is quite a thin one. I say again, not that it feels weak, which is a testament to the durability of veg tan. You can check out my video of different types of leather up there. In wearing this, I found the advantages to be that it breaks in quickly and it feels soft and pliable. Uh, and so far, there's been no question about uh, durability or tearing or anything like that. The disadvantage is that it's not as supportive off-road if you want to go off-road. Look, I mean in, in reality, this is not an off-road kind of boot. Uh, the tongue is unlined, it feels to be about the same thickness. Uh, it's partially gusted uh, up to the fifth eyelet and it feels quite secure and protective. There is a single piece backstay with an external celastic heel counter sandwiched between the backstay and the upper's leather. Uh, there is no suede heel patch on the inside because the whole shaft is in a quite nappy rough texture anyway. The toe cap, I've been told from Reddit reviews, is a real toe cap, meaning it's an extra piece on top of the full vamp. I can't swear to that though, I, I think I would find that difficult to believe. The broguing and pinking of the toe caps, uh, it's a work of art. The zigzag of the pinking and the brogue holes are very precise. There is a celastic toe stiffener between the uppers and lining leather. The hardware is eight not very big brass eyelets and the laces that come with the boot are thin uh, round wax laces from guarded goods. I'm not a fan of these laces because they are slippery, so waxy, <laughs> and hard to keep tied up. And being thin, it's quite fiddly to knot. I don't mind the all eyelet configuration, uh, but this boot with the thin leather on the shaft is more difficult to get your foot in than most and I do have to almost take the laces all the way out or I tend to step on and crush the, the shaft as I shove my feet in. Uh, the stitching on the stitch down, uh, just immaculate. It's not Viberg fine stitch density, but overall a fine stitch density is not always a great thing, especially when your cobbler has to match his stitching to the exam sa uh, same uh, stitch holes when he replaces the sole. The stitching on the leather panels, singles, triples, uh, a very close parallel doubles is clean and neat. The top of the collar and the lace facings have a second piece of leather backing up. Being a veg tan, the Wicket and Craig uh, traditional harness is intended for horsey gear. <laughs> so in a heavier weight or thickness could potentially be quite hard to use in a boot. Uh, it is vegetable tanned and then it's hot stuffed with waxes, oils and tallows. And then it goes through a process that they call jack glazing. I don't know what the process of jack glazing is, but apparently uh, it brings the oils and waxes back up to the surface to kind of glaze the surface. So um, caring for it will involve replacing the oils as the leather gets wet and dries over time. When you have to condition it, and I say that carefully because we boot collectors often do and tell beginners to condition their boots regularly. It's not always necessary and regularly has a lot of different interpretations. Now I wear my boots lightly and to be honest, I condition my boots maybe once a year and some of them even less. Despite the uh, oil hot stuffing, these actually feel quite dry, I think because of the glazing and I guess I'd describe it as a, as a smooth shiny leather. After a month of constant wear and then regular but not intense wear over a few months, it did feel a bit dry so I have condi uh, conditioned these ones with Venetian shoe cream. The initial contact of the cream to leather is a shock. It darkens and stains and patches quite badly. But within a half hour, all the patchiness was gone and a, a good brushing and then buffing with a cloth removed any unevenness of color and leaves it with a nice uh, patina. All that being said though, it has definitely darkened with wear, uh, with the air, with being in the sun, with sweat, with moisture from rain and damp grass. You know, I prefer this more mature tan than the initial pale color. In terms of sizing, this last, I think it's called the 1118, is quite a wide fitting last. My Brannock size is a US 8.5 in D width. I usually wear most American boots in an 8D. Christian Daniel recommends going true to size, and that has been my experience. I wear these in an 8.5D, uh, and the fit is excellent. Uh, if I'm wearing medium to thick socks. They are a looser fit if you prefer thin dress socks, but I still wouldn't size down to be honest. We are talking, you know, millimeters. I think I said earlier, break-in was minimal. 
uh, the uppers shifted to the shape of my feet quite quickly and the stitch down construction helped the flexing of the sole at the ball of the feet again quite quickly. As for comfort, an accurate fitting makes it very comfortable around the foot. The leather insole and midsole combination is comfortable underneath and the softer studded sole gives good shock absorption. I would rate these um, especially in the way the last widens at the ball of the foot to avoid any you know, fashion squeeziness. I would rate these to be amongst the, the most comfortable in my collection. I ordered these in September 2023 uh, and paid 475 US dollars. The same price is showing on their website now as at the end of uh, April 24. These compare to Parkhurst models at around the $400 mark. Uh, and to, they compare to Grant Stone at just under $400. And to say uh, Ellen Edmonds Higgins Mill for an older uh, brand, uh, at the high 400s, but always on sale somewhere under 300. So pricing wise, these Larry boots, you know, are more than similar models. But I think the difference might be that the workshop or factory, despite being in Mexico, uh, I suspect they have a much higher handmade content to them, making the uh, construction longer. In terms of materials used, I would rate these on par with Parkhurst, Ellen Edmonds and Grant Stone. Uh, in terms of finishing and QC, I would rate these slightly above Parkhurst uh, and the Higgins Mill, but I think under Grant Stone. I think you will have to decide whether it's worth it. I'm probably biased toward the smaller brands and uh, I will take the slightly higher price quite easily. There you have it. My take on the Larry lace-up boot from Christian Daniel. I love the Fernando Chelsea boot and I'm, I'm really loving the feel of these Larry boots on my feet. The only reason I don't wear these more than I do, I think is uh, perhaps because of the paleness of the tan. They do stand out more than most and you don't always want your feet to stand out. <laughs> well, I hope you like this review anyway. You know what to do, eh? Click on like and subscribe. It is a huge help to my channel to get more eyes on my reviews. And if you like these reviews, it will help you also because YouTube's algorithm will show you more videos like these from myself and from others. Anyway, I hope to see you back here and take care out there until the next time.